In such tumultuous times that we live in, with the deaths of individuals such as Breonna Taylor, Ahmaud Arbery, and George Floyd, this has led the country to carry out several protests demanding equality for all black lives. Before you watch this video, please do us a favor, please make sure you hit that like button and you hit that subscribe button. And when you hit that subscribe button, please make sure you turn on that notification bell so that you are alerted when the upcoming videos are out. We challenge you to share this video with many others out there as well. It's important that we keep having these important conversations to help address issues right now that we're facing. Shine bright like a diamond. Shine bright like a diamond. Shine bright like a diamond. Hey everyone, I'm Marion. I'm Marilyn. Welcome to this Dynamic Duo Edition. Yes, you're seeing double this time. In our last video, we talked about what race is and address both the social construct and the biological concept of it. Next, we dived into what racism is and talked about the two often conflated terms, racism and prejudice. Following this, we discussed about and give examples of what stereotypes and microaggressions are. Yeah, the whole point of the last video was to urge us to think about the prejudices we hold in our minds, have conversations with various individuals from different backgrounds, and dismantle the biases that we have against these individuals. Before you watch this video, if you haven't watched the last video, please, please make sure you watch it first before watching this one because things will make more sense that way. In order to make this video, we had to read some in-depth articles in which we'll link below. Please be sure to check them out in order to further educate yourselves. Moving on, today we will discuss the various forms of racism as well as talking about some of the ways in which we can combat them. Forms of racism. The first one that we will address is individual racism, which is the prejudices and biases about an individual based on their race. An example of this is this inherent notion that some people have about white people being superior to other racial groups. Another example of individual racism would be refusing to hire a person of color because you believe that something is off about that person without any sort of proof about that notion that you're holding in your head. The second form of racism is institutional racism. Institutional racism is the system by which practices and policies are put in place that usually favor white individuals over individuals of disadvantaged minority backgrounds. An example of this is redlining. Owning a home is another way of wealth accrual. So when redlining was implemented in the 1930s, it targeted specific groups, in this case minorities, from getting loans, mortgages, and insurance. Some believe till today that this is why we see wealth disparities between whites and those from minority backgrounds. The third form of racism is structural racism. According to the Aspen Institute, structural racism is a system by which public policies, institutional practices, cultural representations, and other norms work in ways that reinforce racial group inequity. An example of this is when the government decides to build low-income housing to help low-income Blacks and Latinos. What they often fail to take into account is that these areas are not typically located by jobs, decent school systems, public transportation, among many other important infrastructure. The new residents typically don't have the revenue to contribute to the area's tax base. The government then spends its limited resources helping those from suburban areas have public transportation to commute to their downtown jobs. There are some steps we can take to move forward. There is no one cut clear way for solving the issue of racism, but there are several steps that we can take to begin to address this pertinent issue. The first key step would be educating ourselves about the past so we come to understand why certain things are the way they are. Some individuals 
tend to blame disadvantaged groups for the issues that they're dealing with, but they forget to realize that America's history has led to the educational, the wealth, and the health gaps that are present in these communities. The next step is having open and honest conversations. This is key to dismantling the biases and prejudices that we all hold as individuals. This does not mean that we are colorblind, but it does mean that we all have to make an effort to speak with and interact with folks who look different from us. After the recent events in Minnesota, there have been calls to defund the police. In a city like Columbus, Ohio, one third of that city's budget goes into funding the police department. There's been this outcry that police officers may not be well equipped to handling situations involving minorities because of the disadvantageous economic situations that these minority groups are faced with. Maybe some of these funds could be redirected to improving the educational system, mental health services, affordable home ownership, and increasing access to health care. These are issues that have contributed to the atrocious gap we see today between minority groups and white individuals. And I think that there should also be an emphasis on training police officers to be racially sensitive and de-escalation techniques. Lastly, try to combat day-to-day -day racism. Don't just be a passive bystander, but be an active member if you truly want to help in this fight. Call out microaggressions, record racial injustices, and educate family members who hold prejudices against certain minorities. We're all God's creation. We should strive not to judge individuals on the color of their skin, but on who they are as people. We must remember that minority groups are facing a lot of the problems that they are today, not because of their own choosing, but because of the historical context to which they've been subjected to. Thank you for watching this video. Please comment down below on additional steps that people can take to help combat the issue of racism. Again, remember that we all have a part to play in this. Whatever actions we carry out can either help to solve the issue and or add to it. Lastly, please remember to give this video a like, make sure you hit that subscribe button, and when you hit that subscribe button, please turn on that notification bell so that you are alerted about upcoming videos. Additionally, please remember to share this video with everybody around you. It's important that we have this conversation so that we can move forward as a society. Educating yourself is key. See you next time.